Last time we talked about the Lost Soul, we were talking about the new Core Post flavor, and I mentioned some new data on the way. Well, it is here. It was presented at ISSN, and today we're going to be talking about it. So Velocitol is an ingredient sold by Nutrition 21 aimed at improving the response to whey protein in the body. It increases muscle protein synthesis response to consumption of whey protein, but unfortunately in the past has only really been studied at lower doses. Now, as we're starting to study at higher doses, we're also starting to see data on other things like long-term adaptations uh, in power output, endurance, uh, jumping, uh, height and power, net protein, as well as we're also looking looking at the possibility of other body composition things and stuff like that. Well, I talked about some new data on this performance idea and we're finally able to talk about it now. This study as a follow-up to the 2017 muscle protein synthesis study uh, looked at a few different specific things such as change in total squat reps, change in relative jump average power, change in vertical jump height, change in relative squat one rep max, and whole body net protein balance. The groups in the study weren't all that different from other studies uh, as it was a follow-up to the 2017 study. The active group which was 15 grams of whey protein and 2 grams of velocity a comparator group of 15 grams of whey protein alone, so that is the same amount as the active group, and a high-dose comparator group of 30 grams of whey protein, obviously with no velocitol. So 30 grams is uh, around the ballpark of what you find in most scoops of protein, 25 grams usually most often, being the, the kind of like the industry normal group, comparing that to really what we're looking at, the 15 grams with the velocitol. We obviously know that 15 grams of uh, protein with velocitol is going to fare better than 15 grams of protein alone, but how does it fare against a full dose of 30 grams of protein? Well, 35 trained individuals were recruited for this. It's not a huge study, but there was a decent amount of data collected, and they used a randomized active control double blind study to see what might happen. There was no placebo in this. Everyone was uh, receiving protein and one group was receiving Velocitol. No placebo for Velocitol there. But they used uh, at zero, four, and eight weeks, they uh, measured those uh, performance data, but as well as body composition using uh, bod pod, DEXA, and biological impotence, and the whole body protein balance using an alanine. And so outside of a few different uh, participants dropping for non-compliance and adverse event, I think there was an injury in the training. They were pushing these guys decently hard. Let's jump straight into the data what really happened well kind of obvious all participants gained strength and increased lean body mass and muscle size so all these people were training hard they were eating well and they were receiving some sort of protein they did improve in strength and body mass and muscle size across the board, it's pretty obvious. However, the active group saw a statistically significant increase in lower body muscular endurance, meaning that their reps to failure in the squat increased a significant amount as compared to other groups, both the 15 grams of protein and the 30 grams of protein. The vertical jump power and height increased more for the active group as compared to the other groups. And if you look at the uh, charts, it was a pretty significant difference. Relative squat strength improved more for the active group than for the other groups. And uh, an interesting one was that the net protein balance was significantly greater in the active group at four weeks, but at eight weeks, it was not. So more data is needed on that one, but it was interesting to see that at four weeks, it was significantly higher, and at eight weeks, it was not. So Zeigenfuss, the... I hope I'm saying that right. The researcher that ran this uh, found that consuming two grams of lost salt with 15 grams of whey protein was most optimal looking at most of the data. They actually even uh, provided a media friendly summary saying ingesting protein before and or after resistance exercise has previously been shown to augment training adaptations, i.e. muscle strength, muscle size, power output, etc. This study found that combining 15 grams of whey protein with a patented amylopectin chromium complex Velocitol, increased lower body muscular endurance and power, as in squat repetitions to failure, vertical power, vertical jump, but did not augment changes in body composition in comparison to protein alone. Now, the researchers theorize that Velocitol carries out its benefits by optimizing early adaptations to whole body protein balance. Now that's the difference between muscle protein synthesis and muscle protein breakdown, something that we've talked about every here and there on, on different podcasts. If you wanna learn more about that, actually our most recent podcast with John Meadows at the Arnold uh, two years ago was really big on that. Talking about the difference between muscle protein breakdown and muscle protein synthesis is important because you need to be training very hard and breaking down muscle protein, but you also need to be repairing it. One of the greatest uh, analogies I've ever heard was actually John Meadows in that podcast talking about digging a hole as training and filling the hole back as recovery. 
Not a lot of people train pretty hard. Not a lot of people fill that hole back up efficiently enough to con continue uh, moving forward. So in plain language, what does this really mean? Velocitol helps the body in an early stage use the protein more efficiently. Now, obviously we need more data. Uh, I'd like to see lar larger participant groups, but as of right now, the data is pretty conclusive that it does improve muscle protein synthesis in conjunction with consumption of whey protein. Will we like to know more? Absolutely. And Nutrition 21 is one of the companies that we are most trusting that they will keep continuing to produce more data um, for us to understand the ingredient and for companies to understand better how to use the ingredient. But right now, I find it really ironic that brands are still continuing to put Velocitol with full doses of protein. Uh, but going into this next season of protein getting more expensive, it might actually be interesting to see more brands using a lower dosage of it to cut that cost while the, that cost of weight is going so high and still continue to see the same gains in muscle protein synthesis with Velocitol. So hopefully this was helpful. Uh, I am a big fan of Velocitol. I, uh, if you watch the channel, you know I love posts from Core. Um, obviously, Big Hydro from O15 also contains it um, from Mark Lobliner and Brandon Curry. I'm hoping that we see more Velocitol in the next couple of months because of this whey protein pricing issue. I think it might be a good time for that innovation to shine a little bit more, but that's just a small prediction of mine. In any case, I hope that the content was helpful and informative. We do have to say, uh, we do have a, a business affiliate relationship with Nutrition 21, but this was just more of a look at the actual data so that you guys can understand a little bit of what Velocitol is doing and what the most current data is presenting and suggesting. If you have any questions about the content, feel free to leave a comment below. I'd love to talk to you about Velocitol, Nutrition 21, Core, um, O15, any of that stuff. As always, guys, I really appreciate you making this far in the video. And as always, have a great day. Welcome to Price Plow.